But overall thoughts on the Titans? Awful, awful, awful. Why did we draft Will Levis? Malik Willis, what's the plan with him? Is he just getting sent to the XFL for five years and see if he turns into anything promising? And then Ryan Tannehill, is he the guy next year? And then also, our best receiver was injured all year last year. It was still a hole even with him, and we we're relying on a rookie. And then is Derrick Henry going to get traded because he's now at the point where if he plays – all of this season, you're not going to get any value back for him. And oh yeah, the defense, there's still some question marks, especially because as the offense deteriorates, the defense isn't far like that far behind because players are going to want out. They're going to want to get to contenders and then Mike Frabel love him. But with how bad this roster is, don't think he's going to be able to pull it together and make anything fancy out of it. But how do you feel about the Titans? Because I feel like I'm pretty like, no, nah, I think they're going to suck. I feel like they should suck, but there's this weird element with Mike Frabel. I felt like last year it was the same idea, yeah. and they were competing for the division to end the season. That's Granted, that's I think that, I mean, they got hurt. They had Josh Dobbs out there um, to end the season, and they had a lot of injury um, issues. However, at the same time, this team, I feel like they're, they're pretty much, since they've lost A.J. Brown, which obviously was last year, yeah. Um, they've overperformed from what my expectations were. So I feel like similar to how the Patriots were when I made my predictions for the Patriots, it's like, I feel like this team's going to win more games than we expect them to, but I don't think they're going to be in the playoffs by any means. Does Will Levis play? Yes. Will Levis play is probably halfway through the season. Yeah. Either because Tannehill gets hurt or they just want to see what they got with Will Levis because this is definitely his last year with the Titans. I'm going to go week six or seven. Um, six or between seven. six and eight. Looking at the schedule here, I feel like their best bet would be week 10, which we're going to go through, but we shall see. doesn't always happen luck-wise with when they move that schedule out. they got to focus on playoff berths and things like that, so doesn't always they don't always put them in when they need to. But let's start with week one. They're at New Orleans. At New Orleans, um, I can actually see them winning that game. You know why? I think Derrick Henry is fresh at the beginning of the season, even though I just took all that time to trash the Titans, how I think they're going to be absolutely horrible this year. I think you're on the road versus Derek Carr um, with the New Orleans Saints first time, and then he's going to be kind of getting used to that offense. So it may take him some time to get up to speed. We don't know the health of Kamara and Michael Thomas coming into the year. And then Jarvis Landry, there's going to be some continuity continuity issues with the Saints early on the year. So I think that's actually, if you're going to pick them to win a game, that's a good one to win. I see the vision. And then they have a tough little slate here. They start week two at home against the Chargers. Week two at home versus the Chargers. Yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be a win for the Chargers. That's gonna be a tough loss. So yeah. we're starting one and one. And then they go to Cleveland, one o'clock game for the Browns. <sighs> Ooh. I want to pick them, but they're in Cleveland. I think Deshaun Watson starts to maybe find some of his mojo by week three. Um, Elijah Moore, Juan Thornhill, some huge pickups for the Browns. Not a lot of people are talking about them, but if Deshaun is 75% of himself to 80, the Cleveland Browns are going to be a very good football team this year with some of the additions they made and then the team they already had there. So, yeah, I think week three, also a loss in Cleveland. And then week four. Not doing them any favors at home against the Bengals. I mean, <laughs> do I need to say anything? We know how I feel about Joe Burrow. We know how you feel about Joe Burrow and the Bengals. Yes. I feel like that's a tough loss. Yeah, that'll be a tough loss. And then at Indy for week five. At Indy for week five? I... I see a win there. I feel like you've had a tough stretch to start the year, but your continuity um, with Derrick Henry, he's still going to be moving a little bit. You still have Jeffrey Simmons on defense wrecking havoc there. And then you're going up against a young quarterback, a coach who's still figuring it out um, to be fair to the Titans and throw some wins in there. I'll see them winning that game. How do you feel? Yeah, I think uh, at that point, maybe they bring in Anthony Richardson at that point. I feel like they're going to start the season with Gardner Minshew. <gasps> Yo, yeah. So Gardner Minshew, I mean, he I like him a lot as a player, but at the same time, their number one receiver, Michael Pittman, I think he's more of a two. 
And then they didn't really do anything to address a wide receiver in the draft. Alec Pierce is decent. I think he's more of a three. I just don't think they have enough talent yet. And this is a team that's going to struggle out the gate and maybe get hot later. But we'll talk about the Colts in a second. But I think this is a game that they should win. Cool. Week six. Week six against Baltimore. And this is a, an international game. I'll look where it is. Uh, looks like it is in London. Another London game. Um, yeah, that's a game I could see them winning. I could see them going overseas with Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry maybe getting a little bit hot overseas. These are weird, funky games. So I usually go with the underdog. Lamar Jackson seems like he's a little bit too cool for school. Odell Beckham Jr., same deal. Don't think they're going to be too enthused that they have to go to London this early in the season is going to kind of mess up their vibe. So I'm actually going to see them leveling out and going three and three. And then they have a bye week. You get some rest. And then they come back week eight rested at home against the Falcons. Hmm. Yeah, that's a win. I feel like you're at home versus the Falcons. You went to London, figured it out. You're coming off your bye week. Mike Vrabel, still an excellent head coach. We still like some of the guys on defense. Who knows? Maybe they picked up some rookies like Rodrigo we don't know about who are going to come in there on defense and fill in some holes. So, yeah, I feel like if you're healthy at receiver, that's another winnable game if Derrick Henry's still on the team. And then they are going on the road on Thursday Night Football, short week. And they're taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers. This is in week nine. This is a dogfight, but I think a healthy TJ Watt is a very dangerous Pittsburgh Steelers team. Steelers are going to have a tough time winning games in the AFC. I feel like every game for them is going to be a dogfight. Don't see them blowing too many teams out unless their defense steps it up um, another level around TJ Watt this year. Um, so I'm going to have them uh, losing that game to the Steelers. And then they are... Back on the road, uh, the second of three straight road games to take on the Tampa Bay Bucks in Week Ten. <laughs> just, you can just put the wind down there. Yeah, Baker, are you? Is Baker still playing? Or are we on the Blaine Gabbert now? Or did we re, did we try and trade for Jameis and bring him back? Kyle Trask. Yeah, did we reach out about Malik Willis? Nate Sudfeld. Yeah, did we make a call to the XFL? Um. Because, honestly, would I rather have Baker Mayfield or Ben DiNucci? Yeah, you're gonna have to I'd rather have Ben DiNucci. Got to call the Broncos on that one. Yeah, or maybe Anthony Richardson's lighting the world on fire. Um, You can go out there and get Gardner Minshew, who's a Florida version of Baker Mayfield, who I feel like would resonate with the Bucks fans. But, yeah, is Baker your quarterback? Okay, you're going to win. So we're actually doing okay. At week 10, we're 5-4. and four. And if Tannehill's still healthy, I don't think we have a Leva sighting yet. Yeah, and I mean, the schedule has some tough games to end it, starting in Week 11 against the Jags, which you said was a loss. Right, that's a loss. So that's 5-5 five and five for them. And then they're going to go um, Week 12 at home against the Panthers. That's another tough game, but I feel like at that point, Bryce Young's kind of figuring it out. Um, you're battling in your division right now. You've fallen way behind the Jags. Maybe it's time where we start to pump the brakes. I feel like you lose that game to the Panthers, and they're starting to really find their groove. And then um, divisional game at home against the Colts. At home against the Colts? Um, I see them losing that game. I think they'll split with the Colts, and then you're going to lose the second out of those games. And then Anthony Richardson... Maybe in or Garner Minshew um, is in, but either way, I feel like you'd lose that game. And then Monday Night Football, Week 14, uh, on the road against the Miami Dolphins. On the uh, yeah, that's a loss. Yeah. <laughs> on the road against the Miami Dolphins. Do you have enough? Do you have speed on defense? I don't. Not that much no, speed. No, they have no chance. And then. Um, they face on at home Sunday against the Texans in week 14, in week 15, week 15. I think this is the first game that will have starts. Now that we're five and eight, we're starting to fall behind. Now we want to see what we're going to do. So our fish, my prediction now is week 15 for will Levis to start. And I think, um, who are we playing again? 
uh, the Texans. The Texans? I think we lose that game. I think the Texans are coming on strong. We just beat the Jaguars. If you want to check out the Jaguar schedule, watch the last video, and then go ahead, lose that game. CJ Stroud's coming on. Texans defense is coming alive. We might have a chance to get a wild card. Who knows? Maybe, maybe so, maybe not for the Texans, but I think that's another loss. And then, oh, this will be fun. Uh, Christmas Eve, uh, week 16 against the Seahawks at home. (laughs) We're dead now. We're dead. We're five and ten. We're five and ten. We've lost six in a row. That's a tough one. Yeah. And then, not to make things any better, but uh, New Year's Eve, they're on the road against the Texans. Yeah, that's another loss. I think the Texans are fighting to stay alive um, in the hunt. So they got them losing again. And then uh, again. and then week 18, they end it with the Jags, which you have as a loss. As a loss. So we finished the year 5-12, and 12, which I think is very fair for this Titans team um, in week 18. But we start the year pretty good. We go 5-4, and four, and then we lose basically the rest of the season. We lose out. See, I think that they're... Closer to like seven wins. I think seven wins is seven. Yeah. I think five to seven. This is appropriate. Yeah. Five to seven is fair for them. Um, Just in that three range window. And then do you think about week 15 is a good time to see Levis if Tannehill doesn't get hurt? And if Tannehill does get hurt, it's probably going to be around week six to nine. Yeah. I think that. So if they're going to see what they have with Levis, they're going to want him to have at least four games under his belt. So week 15, sure. I think they're going to do it sooner, though, because I think Tannehill's either going to get hurt or I just think that they want to see what they have with Will. I think Will has a higher upside than Tannehill at this point. Uh, Tannehill knows he's not going to be here forever, especially because the back-to-back drafts, they draft a, a quarterback of the future. So I think we'll see him closer to Week 12, honestly. Week 10 to Week 12. Closer to Week 12? I think yeah, we're going to see ha- half a season of Will Levis, most likely. Yeah, I feel like if you're the Titans, you really have to find out what he is this year because I feel like Will Levis gives like a young, but he gives me like a 20-year-old, 30-year-old man vibe, if that makes sense. Yeah. Where he's kind of age, and I don't know how much better he's going to get, but he's definitely a gunslinger, and he could be the next Jameis Winston, or it could be pretty good for you. So I feel like you want to see what he is this year. Even Malik Willis got some starts last year. So I think we'll definitely see him, especially as Tannehill starts to age. And I feel like this is the year we'll be like, okay, Tannehill actually looks kind of old this year and he's not his normal mediocre self. 